his head, and there he goes. A fist gonna clean him up. Olaf goes down. Everyone's just gonna line up here for Lazzy. He's gonna find himself the Quadra. I give it to him. That's a kill. Grizzly with the quad feet gets the ace. Available just spin to win all over. That game was insane. Hello and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Here, welcome back to the Saints Gaming CA Twitch channel. Of course, your home for all things Saints, you know, St. Clair Saints varsity esports. And of course, we have ourselves a fantastic night ahead of us here. A little bit of a later one, but thank you for tuning in nonetheless as we have our first glimpse of our new League of Legends roster here in the DreamHack Beyond's Collegiate Invitational as our St. Clair Saints are going to be going up against the squad from Stony Brook Esports out of Stony Brook University. My name's Dan Banner, also known as Mr. Danner. is going to be your host and producer here for tonight's match at hand. Just a matter of time before we get on into the matchup. It took us a little bit longer to get into the swing of things. Definitely do apologize for the delay, but nonetheless, we are just about to get ready. And as we are uh, looking at, we have ourselves a quick second here. Why don't we talk about the new rosters here? Because this is going to be a little bit weird for... Um, old St. Clair College fans, because this, of course, brand new roster, no returning players from the past seasons that you would have seen here on the Saints channel. Of course, now, as we list them off here, we do have, starting from the top, we have Eric Moffitt. That's going to be Jorge Mesvidal. I am going to have a mouthful with that name all day. We have David Peterkin. That's Ethug. We have Felix Blaze, also known as EDG Scout. We have Regan Davis, also known as Fresh. And then we have Charles Barlow Basilian down in the bot lane as well. So a bunch of new people. I'm a little bit dark today. Don't, don't mind me about that. But brand new squad coming out here. And I mean the recruitment from this, from uh, Atmosphere and the rest of the... Uh, Things have been doing absolutely crazy over the summer. Just trying to get in a fresh new squad here. All very, very high rated individually. But how they play in the competitive team environment is going to be a completely different story. More than likely. Or they'll just absolutely prove me wrong. Because of course this is the first non-scrim match that they've had together. They Of course they've been practicing for quite a while nonetheless. But... First time there's something on the line here, this DreamHack Beyond Invitational, to kind of go over a little bit what we're playing here for tonight. So, basically, there was eight teams invited into this, of course us being one of them, then split up into groups of four, and we'll be playing everybody once throughout this week, with the finals then being on Saturday and Sunday. But, without further ado, it looks like we're going to hop on in to the pro draft and see what our lineup is going to look like here for game number one of course this meta is going to look completely different since the last time i've hopped on the summoners rift myself as we have ourselves our first bands coming on through on the side of stony brook they do not want zigs they don't want jacks so don't want since out either so we have some hard engage alongside some wave clear and poke you know on the side of st Clair, getting rid of the tom kench echo and viego all characters that could definitely go in if they wish. I know Tom Kench got himself a little bit of a rework as of late as well. Saints not wanting to deal with that. With Stony Book being on the blue side, they're going to get the pick first. And this is one thing that when talking to Coach Blaze and Coach Yuri earlier in the afternoon, he's like, expect to see Diana first picked every single time on the blue side. And then from there on out, there is a Wombo combo that can definitely be used. I'm trying to see exactly who that was with. I'm going to try and get that information very, very shortly. But unless on the side of St. Clair, one way to try and stop a Wombo combo is a Kindred. Being able to pop that ultimate and keep everybody alive, even if it's at a sliver of health, can definitely make or break a team fight. Meanwhile, going to bring a little bit of safety and a little bit of support and poke in the side of a Lulu as well here. Back on over to Stony Brook. We see the, st the set, especially, or we're just talking about uh, characters that like to go in. And set also being rather tanky as well, loves to brawl. So being able to go in there first, maybe even follow up with Diana could definitely be something we see throughout the night. Wombo 
one more pick on the side of uh, side of SVU, and it's actually Yasuo that's technically the Wombo Combo from what I understand here. But we're not going to see that just yet. We're going to see the Callista, so as if Saints didn't have enough characters that want to dive in, Callista's ultimate being able to just completely pick up a teammate and throw them into the fight is going to be another thing that the Saints are now going to have to worry about. Saints, however, now get the, her third pick before we get into the second phase of banning. So, get to see in just a moment here what they want to answer this relatively in-your-face composition. How about a little bit of poke? Going to be bringing out the virus here, of course. Basically, nobody better in terms of long-range AD carry poking, so fair enough there. In terms of banning, of course, with uh, Sony Brook basically being the in-your-face in composition as of right now, pick off another champion that very well might fill that role as well. Galio going to get taken off the board, especially since he can basically dive you from halfway across the map. So, a fair ban on the side of St. Clair. As of right now, like Saints don't necessarily have a real theme to them, I feel like. Like, Kindred, okay, sure, that's going to stop any sort of diving. Lulu, okay, that's safety. Okay, Virus, you got Poke. But there isn't really much of a theme here as of this moment. So banning-wise for SBU, it is going to be the Aatrox taken off. Going to take a shot at Jorge's top lane champion pool. Meanwhile, on the side of St. Clair, another hard engage in your face support. Going to take Leona off the board. One more ban on the side of SBU. Then we could start filling these teams out here. Sony Brooks, of course, like I was saying before. Relatively scary composition, especially with some of these squishy targets. If they have no peel, they will absolutely explode with the way this is lining up right now. Final ban is going to, I believe that was Illusion before it did get blacked out. We are going to get the confirmation here in the lobby chat in just a second. But I believe that was... Oh, that was actually a Nautilus ban. So it was a last second switch. And unfortunately, the Pro Draft kind of crashed on us. So Nautilus going to be taken off the board. One of the hook supports with being rather tanky as well. Start kind of closing up these these team compositions. It's going to be Mordekaiser more than likely up in the top lane there for Jorge. Now, going back on over. SBU gets to finish up their lineup. And then Saints get one more possible counter pick. If Stonybrook did want to go for this Yasuo Diana composition, it is on the table. That being said, though, it's looking like a possible Urgot pick. Maybe up in the top lane, maybe somewhere else. We'll have to see. Urgot is going to be locked in. That's going to keep things nice and interesting here. One more pick on the side of Stonybrook. Twisted Fate being hovered. Of course, another one of those characters I could dive on in if necessary. Going to actually pick up the Swain here. A little bit interesting. Definitely likes to be in your face as well. And then St. Clair going to round things up with a Silas. So, team composition is being shown. We'll get to see momentarily in the secondary draft phase exactly who is playing which. We can have our assumptions, but we'll have to get the confirmation very, very shortly. Introduce our opponents here on the side of Stony Brook University. We do have Clammy Boy up in the top lane. We have Whisperance in the jungle. We have Sniff Ninja in the mid lane. And down bottom, we have Yanni as your AD carry player and Danasaur as your support. Comparing ranks across both, as of right now, I would give Saints the slightest of edges. But if there's one thing that I have seen time and time again, Individual rank, of course, does not mean the end all be all here in these matchups. It does look like we are going to be switching on over to the actual in game one, so we'll get to see specifically where everybody will be picked up. So it's going to be roughly the same kind of process here, but we're just going to see the aftermath as well with regards to where everybody is playing. Definitely a little bit interesting, though, at least on my 
not unexperienced, but not necessarily maybe 100% up to the exact terms of the meta right here right now. But as I see it right here, SBU does not have a traditional support as of this moment. So curious to see who Dinosaur will be picking up here for the support. Meanwhile, we are going to see Clammy Boy up there in the top lane on the Urgot to take care of Jorge up that Mordekaiser. The Diana is going to be played by Whisperance in the jungle. Kindred, of course, going to be played by Ethug. Silas going to be played by Scouts in the mid lane. No surprise there. Sniff Ninja going to be picking up the Swain. Just rounding out these bands once again. We know Saints composition is not necessarily too hard to figure out. We're going to see Barlow going to be picking up the AD carrier role here with that virus. Then it's just a matter of who's the support on the side. Is maybe a support set? I guess support set. Yeah, never mind. A support set's kind of been a thing for a little while now, hasn't it? Keep forgetting it. And sure enough, paired up with the Kalista and being able to throw a set directly into the face of everybody. That definitely makes sense. In my book and then fresh of course going to be picking up the lulu so our teams are here they are ready and we are going to get to see our first glimpse of course of our saints roster in action versus stony brook definitely looking forward here to this one unfortunately don't necessarily have the most amount of background information on this stony brook squad how long they've been playing together or if this is a relatively new or experienced team it's kind of hard to make some predictions here, but I will say this. Saints definitely have to watch out for X to say the least here. Guys, Diana jumping on in can absolutely, with a little bit of backup, just blow up anybody on the Saints roster with the exception of maybe Mordekaiser. Yes, there is Kindred to try and stop that, but you have to worry about first getting level 6 and then also being in the right position to actually make the stop. So... May have the tools, but it does not guarantee that you are going to be able to block that out. So, without further ado, got ourselves a little bit of a wait here before we hop into the matchup. Of course, three minute delay on the match itself. And then for use at home here, we're also on an additional two minute delay on the request of DreamHack Beyond's rule set. So, what you may see a moment ago, I may not respond to as quickly in chat because I might have. Uh, around that delay and whatnot so that is what it is there but definitely going to be excited we see everybody pouring in out here already i'd love to see the support here for this league of legends squad thank you all for tuning in and cannot wait to get into action taking a look at some additional stats here for both these guys i'm curious to see how this uh the silas versus swain matchup is going to end up here for the side of St. Clair. I know Silas has a little bit of Pope, but overall kind of a, a little bit of an in-your-face kind of champion. Will it get poked out by Swain? Probably not, I would assume, if Scout is going to ask to get the Silas picked up. Because, or excuse me, let's rephrase that a, a second there. The Swain was picked prior to the Silas getting picked up here, so this was specifically a counter pick from Scout in this situation, unless they were specifically going for a team composition, but that being said, though, Silas being able to steal an ultimate on the opposing side, or basically getting the choose which ultimate of anybody who was close by, must have something in mind. And of course, Swain being able to go into his ultimate form, that transformation form, and be super tanky, Silas probably wants a little bit of that as well, so that makes sense nonetheless. Get a little bit tanky while also being able to do a ton of damage. Now, one thing before we do hop into the swing of things, of course, is give a couple shout-outs to, of course, everybody for tuning in and supporting already, but, of course, to the sponsors as well. We do, of course, the uh, St. Clair College Alumni Association, St. Clair's SRC, Tim Hortons, Subway, Zeckelman School of Business and Information Technology, and, of course, St. Clair College itself. Thank you all for making this possible here for the St. Clair Saints Varsity Esports team. I don't know about you, but I am itching to get right back on the rift. We are about 30 seconds away and just got to load on in before we get into the action right away. Everybody is good, and we'll be popping into things just momentarily. Just bear with me just a tiny, tiny bit more here.
Just kind of, just kind of reiterate real, real quick then, just the fact that this Saints roster is going to kind of be on a knife's edge unless they can. If they group up, they group up relatively early, they may be kind of safe. But I feel like when it gets to the ganks and it gets to um, the late game, they're going to have to have their warding. They're going to have to have their vision and like play around those objectives. Like really have to tiptoe through it. Otherwise, it could be a bad time. There's so much engage, so much burst damage. Not necessarily a press R and go kind of composition, but close enough to still get the job done. As we hear in the background, enough of me blabbering. It is time for a little League of Legends action here. For the first time in the summer of 2021, we get to see our team in action. Let's get into it. Get baited by my overlay just a second here. There we go. We're back into the action. On the red side, of course, it will be our Saints. On the blue side, it is going to be Stony Brook Esports. Relatively calm starts to get this first game off. Nobody wants to pull the trigger on anything kind of crazy as of this moment. Just going to get that line of scrimmage set up. No positions for lane swaps or anything like that, so it'd be a relatively calm and quiet beginning here. Minions have spawned. In terms of starting positions for the junglers, looks like it's going to be Whispering starting over on the, re the red side of things, or on the red by the red buff rather, and then on the blue side it is going to be E Thug. E Hug, E Thug. It's only been a couple minutes on Marty. Choke it over my words here. We have ourselves a long one here today. Of course, best of three action. Very excited nonetheless. We can finally get this first lane phase underway and get into the action. Uh, this is kind of what I was worried about a little bit here for Scout. Of course, the range from Sniff Ninja's swing is going to be able to kind of outrange him for majority of the time. But at the same time, though, of course, Scout does have those chains. Does get himself a little bit of extra range, so, and kind of poke back. Down bot lane, I feel like the Saints should be able to poke out Danosaur and Yanni, at least for the first couple of levels, until Danosaur does get the, uh, like the second ability that does have the shield on top of it, so. Like, Set could get aggressive, but... With the way that the Saints are kind of zoning them off, they're going to get themselves level 2 first, more than likely. So we do see Fresh and Barlow going to get themselves level 2. And now, Danosaur and Yanni still kind of stuck at level 1. Now that it's in the tower, they should be able to level up quite quickly. Scout going to get himself a little bit poked for his troubles, however. Already done the half health, so that Swain counterpick, at least as of right now, not necessarily looking up to snuff, but there could, of course, still be a massive change as the level's on. Then Clammy and Jorge up here. Rather quiet as of right now. Scout trying to get some more damage in, but he, every opportunity seems to be getting a little bit of poke. Jorge and Eva trying to get themselves a kill on the Clammy boy. We're blowing flashes for this one, and we are going to get it. Jorge, mass of it all. First blood. Now that's the kind of start you want to see here for the Saints. Get the momentum going. We see Scout. We're back on to Ninja. And Fresh is here as well. Will they try to dive tower? Fresh is actually going to dive on in. But he's going to be going right into a teleporting member. Clammy Boy may have died. But he is right back. And you know what? Saints are just going to turn us again. E-Hug is here alongside Jorge. But there is also Danosaur. Danosaur comes on in. Whisper is going to take care of Scout. Have to watch out. E-Hug gets taken down as well. Jorge is extremely low as well. And with four members here, Jorge is going to go down. And Clammy is going to go down for a second time, though. So Jorge is going to get one back. But an overall, over that last minute or so, I believe that was a two for four in the... Or rather, a four for four. So I guess we're kind of back up to the swing of things. Right back up to snuff. Right back to even. Two of those kills going on to Sniff Ninja's Swain as well. Definitely a worst case scenario here for Scout. He's probably going to be needing some help. Never mind, actually. He's just did so much damage. He did get to go back and get items. Fresh is here, and the Flash is going to get the Elimation as that's going to be E Hug. 
Dragon coming through. He's going to get himself a double kill. We have a brawly start to this one here in the mid lane. As the Summer's Rift, not uh, not an A ram, but everybody is still absolutely just brawling away, and we're still not done. We're in the river. Danosaur is getting extremely low. Good chains here from Scout. Probably going to finish the job. Sure enough, going to get one of those kills back. Does have four assists on himself as well. And how about another one? Ehug has four kills already in this first couple of minutes. Four kills in five minutes, beautifully done. In the meantime, Barlow and Yanni still just kind of battling out down the bot lane, but the extra extended range here for Barlow is really poking out at Yanni. Yanni can try to fight back. We do see the spear coming in and doing a little bit of damage back and forth, but overall, Barlow is going to probably run out of his mana quicker, but at the same time, does have the range advantage for at least the time being. Barlow going to have to be careful, however. We do see down the bottom of our mini-map here. We do have Whisperins really close by. Danosaur still down there. Still level 3. All that brawling really threw off a lot of the leveling here for some of the members on the side of uh, Stony Brook. But we now do see e Thug making another trip up to the top lane. Clammy Boy does not have a flash yet. Just going to pass that one over. That's going to be kill number 5 for e Hug. Now we see Danosaur flashing on in, but... Right there, Fresh doing exactly what he needs to do. The Polymorph, alongside the slow, is actually making it so that Barlow has been able to turn onto Yanni. He's going to get the one kill for sure. Danosaur is only level three and is probably going to go down as well. Just one more shot. Looking to try and get the snipe. Fresh is probably going to have to secure this one. Scout finds a solo kill in the mid lane, and we do see it Fresh ending up with the elimination. Whisperance is here, level five. No ultimate on deck yet, so can't really do anything. Just going to kind of force to... That's with the wave a little bit, and that's actually a little bit uh, brave there from Whisperance. Maybe hoping to maybe snag level 6 and then get the ult and just try to dive 1v2. Would have been a little bit overzealous, but may have been on their mind nonetheless. And Saints, after it, what seemed to be a very close start, but a very brawly start, have absolutely just won this early game if they can keep this up. That being said, though, Barlow, he's just in a world of hurt here. He's going to try and answer back with Yanni, but Yanni is going to keep himself alive. So Fresh and try and make it back to tower, getting a little bit feisty, but is not going to be in range of anything from Whisper Instance. Was not level 6 yet, so just getting 6 now. e -hug finds Sniff Ninja. He's forced to pop the ultimate just to survive. That's going to be a long cooldown taken off the field, which could be critical if the Saints opt to look for maybe a dragon sometime soon here after going back and getting themselves a bunch of items, because we know that right now Ehug, with that five eliminations and three assists, they are absolutely killing it here. Fresh, however, is going to get taken down. A nice little setup there from the squad over at Stony Brook. Ehug on the offensive, trying to get some counter jungling in, but that being said, he's got to be careful. He is still basically he's squishy, he's still like a jungle AD carry. As fed as you are, you're going to get squished on. And we do see Scout at least going to answer with one. But can they keep E-Hug alive? He's going to pump the ultimate, keeping everybody in it alive for just a bit more. And nice little play there from Whisperance, actually. Waiting until that ultimate does wear out. Flashes on in. Blows up E-Hug. Getting some solid shutdown gold, too. So Saints maybe getting a little bit overzealous after having such a fantastic lead. I mean, they're still definitely in the lead. They have over 3k right now onto this... Uh, on the Stone Namebrook Esports squad, but they've definitely kind of clawed themselves back a little bit. And Saints haven't gotten themselves any dragons, and I don't know if it's just a steam, or a steam, a team stylistic difference or not, but I know that the old, or the Saints, the Saints uh, varsity squad of old would have definitely pressured a dragon by now, but things could have definitely changed in regards to the games played at the competitive level. I know trying to get those Dragon Souls is always rather critical. But I'll tell you what, as of right now, it looks like we have ourselves a bit of a tie in regards to the biggest loser with all of those brawling, or all the constant brawling. And it's basically just been either to Clammy Boy or to Yanni, both of them 
having themselves a bit of a hard time. If we look up at the top lane right now, Clammy Boy, sitting there with 33 CS, is barely making ends meet here up in that top lane. Meanwhile, Jorge just absolutely smoking them, but we're going to have to see a nice little flip there. But we just see, with all that extra gold, all that extra items, there's so much damage being done. Etha getting a little bit uh, overzealous. He's looking for maybe one more play, going up against it. Probably wisely so. Just let Scout kind of mess around the turret. We do see him go in. Nice. Doesn't get the one. However, it is going to be answered right back. And to be honest, right here, these one-for-ones aren't necessarily a bad thing. Or in this case, possibly a two-on-one. Never mind. Dinosaur hanging on by a thread. And the little minion there from E-Hugs. From e -Hugs character going to get the kill there. The Kindred, that's exactly what it was. The little Kindred coming in clutch. Let's finish the job here. And somewhere in this means of things, we have Rift Her Herald. Shelly gonna come play and absolutely demolish that mid turret. Getting that picked up. So Saints, while maybe not necessarily getting the dragons, have basically all the other control. And now Saints are looking towards the top lane to try and make the play. Amy Boy trying to keep himself safe here between the turret. Does finally pop out. He's gonna be able to at least delay that dive at least a little bit longer that being said though barlow kind of in a rough spot here whispering's on hot pursuit at least he did not get hit by the crescent so he's not going to be able to get dove upon by whispering's save on the last dinosaur going to do a little bit of cheeky interference here up against e-hug Maybe a fine opportunity here to maybe take ourselves a little bit of a run through the lanes. As of right now, like we were mentioning before, top lane looking absolutely brutal here for <laughs> the Saints' favor with Jorge Masvidal, of course, at 87 compared to the 40 of Clammy Boy. Clammy does have himself three assists, but at the same time, or one kill and three assists, but at the same time, Jorge, two kills, three assists. And only the one death as well, just slowly run away with that lane. Meanwhile, in the jungle, E-Hug, seven kills, four assists already here in this game, only going down twice. That being said, the Whisperings isn't doing bad, as we do see the Saints finally opting for that dragon. Going to pick it up nice and quickly here. Nobody on the side of Stony Brook going to be able to kind of interfere with that. They were thinking about maybe something. They were down in that bot lane, but not going to make it happen as of this moment. Flammy Boy still kind of struggling up there. And mid lane, this this lane sure flipped. At first, it looked like Stiff Ninja was actually in a pretty decent position. But now, I feel like this is kind of the tail of the tape here. Sniff Ninja, holy smokes. That is a fed kindred, and that just absolutely popped the birdie and took him down. That's going to be the sixth death right now for Sniff Ninja. You know he's probably having himself a, a rather sad time there right in the mid lane. Just wants this laning phase to be done and maybe find some tanks to hide behind. E hug the battle of the two like relatively fed characters he hugs in between a rock and hard place though clammy boy might be hurt but he's going to try and tank things up he is going to end up going down however so that's going to be kill number nine now for e hug the same slightly death balling it with the exception of scout down towards the bot lane just stealing buffs actually and he's going to spot this oh does see the buff getting taken down at the same time do you really want to mess with scout six assists five eliminations on himself as well plus a hundred cs not a um, champion you really want to deal with. Whisperance, he was the one member on the side of Stony Brook that was actually somewhat fed. And even Whisperance is getting absolutely popped at this point here. So you can probably see some of the life kind of draining here from the Stony Brook Esports squad just waiting for game number two. So we see a nice snipe coming out here from Barlow. Finish the job. Dinosaur still level six, actually. At least has the ultimate, but is a very squishy set at this moment. A nice little jump, though, onto Barlow. Barlow extremely low. Going to have to flash away. E-Hug is here. Going to see the dodge attempt coming out here from Danosaur. Has that shield to keep himself alive just a little bit longer. Not quite going to get out of that one alive, however. Barlow, holy smokes, by the skin of his teeth. And all of the tanks in front of him, plus the support there from Fresh. Keeping him alive. And the Saints are absolutely popping off to start off their debut matchup here in this DreamHack Collegiate Invitational.
Saints have themselves a little bit of time. I mean, we're going to have ourselves one more Rift Herald. To think that we have ourselves over 32 kills already, or at 32 kills already, and it's only uh, 14 minutes in. Just goes to show how crazy this game kind of has been, and this is an extremely long leash. Okay, never mind. I was going to say, that would be a little bit dangerous. That's gonna, that buff's going to get taken away from me, probably. But no, Eha going to take that and pass over the blue buff to his next teammate in a second. Danasaur gets jumped upon. Sniff Ninja is there as well. He hug does dodge Danasaur. Nothing that Danasaur can do. If you're in the face of a set, then you're in trouble. But if you can just keep sidestepping everything as e hug just did, there is not much you can do. Jorge, however, down in the bot lane, stuck with Whisper and Yanni. Trying to fight his way back, but he is going to end up going down. So that's a huge shutdown actually coming out for Yanni. Definitely needed it. Was keeping himself relatively even in regard to CS, actually completely even on CS. So even though the kills and assists and this aren't necessarily in his favor, he has been just keeping up with minion kills and now finally getting a nice shutdown. In theory, this, this Kalista could very well keep on going and give him maybe a possible breath of life. Just has to really be careful about not getting poked out here. Like the Saints, they're not going to dive you really. Like Mordekaiser, of course, kind of pulls you in a little bit, but he's not going to be able to just kind of jump on you. And nobody really can jump on you unless Scout wants to give it a shot, but he needs to make sure that he's relatively tanky before doing so, or just extremely fed. And he at least does have the extremely fed part of it right here. Not as fed as Ehug, however. 11 eliminations and 6 assists as of this moment. Looking absolutely crazy. What do we got? So there is no Herald anymore. Baron will be up in just under 4 minutes. We see Fresh getting jumped on. To be honest, we do see Barlow, unfortunately, whiffing that ultimate. So there is opportunity, but there's just still so much tankiness that this uh, Stony Point... Or Stony Point, Stony Brook squad has to try and poke through, and it's just straight up not working. E-Hug, look them charge on in, Sniff Ninja takes, oh my god, what a crit coming out here from E-Hug. I swear that Swain still had half of his health left. Whisperance is just gonna get straight up 1v1. Jorge misfed all, just going on an absolute tear here as well. Not the most fed, but still got the most beef on the side of the Saints. So we now see this mid inhibitor. There is no way this thing actually survives, does it? I don't see any fight that Sunny Pro can make here. Try and pop off here. That being said, Jorge gets jumped on by two. Danosaur is relatively weak, and he's going to get completely bonked on the head by that mace. Yanni trying his best to kite, but even the queen of kiting herself, Kalista, is not going to be able to do it. Never mind, I eat my words. He absolutely popped off. Nicely done. So <laughs> close. But no cigar, but that being said, Saints are literally in the base at this moment, just poking through the fountain. This one is over, but at least Yanni had a last second little pop off. Well, wasn't that destructive? I did not expect it to be as one-sided as it was. And to be fair, Stony Brook, the initial brawling at the beginning of the match wasn't necessarily going against them, but then... All of a sudden, a couple bad uh, bad jumps, and the Saints got themselves right into position. I think it was like 5 to 12 at some point, and it just got absolutely snowballed. An absolutely brutal matchup. You don't usually see Brawly League of Legends games like this, and especially quick ones at that. So, um, Stony Brook are going to have to go back to the drawing board, otherwise they're going to start this dream hack uh, beyond Collegiate Invitational on the wrong side of the results column. But the St. Clair Saints, I mean... What do you have to change there? Just try the same composition again, unless Stony Brook does something cheeky in the picks and bans. So we'll have to see momentarily, because we're going to take ourselves a very quick break to get the lobby set up for game number two. Thanks for tuning in. Don't go anywhere. Let's see if the Saints can find themselves a 2-0 sweep to start things off. <laughs> 